Everyone, welcome back to Bezal Afrat here at Shirat David, Baruch Hashem, the 20th day of Hello. Wow, we're moving along. <laughs> 10 days to Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> no, it's just, you know, keep, keep it here. <laughs> just 10 days. Wow, okay. Ah, so we're going to continue our lessons in Mitzvah Hashem with, that, with the Siyat HaDishmai, of course, in Lakute Halachis, we're learning Hilchis Tzvillin, and today we're up to Chav Heh. Oh, it's very easy. Today, Baruch, it's very easy. Okay. 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 It's very easy. Right? We started a new, a, new, uh, a, new, a new letter today, so it's easy to find it. No problem. We're not in the middle or anything like that. Okay? Okay, so now, we were talking about this whole idea of the, of, uh, we spoke about Shol HaMelech, right? And, and then the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the advice he took from Doag, and then, and then he left, he left Agog, to be alive by doing that, Haman came around, right? And it was Haman Agogi, right? Um, and then we said that uh, that we said that Mordechai was able to uh, use his Azaz the Kedusha, right? His Azaz the Kedusha, because he was he was he was a very humble person, because he was so humble, he was able to go up against Haman. Now we're going to learn a, really, a little more about the mechanics of how did how did uh, how did um, Mordechai actually subdue? How did Mordechai actually subdue Haman? How did he actually create? How did the victory come about? What was the mechanics of it? Let's see. All right. What it says in the Megillah, right? Mordechai yotzem lefnei Hamelech belavush belavush malchus techelus vechur. Right, the beautiful pasuk. Right. Right, right, right. So after after the house of uh, after the house of uh, of uh, after Haman was hung, right, and then then the Mordechai was given over in charge of Haman's house and all of the and everything he had, right. So then it says that he was now close to the king and he went out wearing the big day malchus, right. He had he had the, he had royal garments as well, right. Amazing. So let's see what what that means. Zut okay. Al al yadeze la yehud de ma'isa ayir v'simcha. Through that, right? Through the fact that Mordechai was able to go out, belavush malchus tchelis chur bekvak. Right? What they like he was doing. So we had la yehud de ma'isa ayir v'simcha. What's ayir? Ayir is zut ayir. Right? Ayir the light. What's the light? Torah. That's Torah, unbelievable, right? Kemoi Shem Rabbi Seinazel, as Chazal teaches in Mesechus Megillah Tav Tes Zayin Amit Beis, right? Now he says, "Umadachai Yotza Belavush Malchus." There bechinas his galus haras pinei hatzadik become a givonim or levushim nehirin. Okay, that the fact that Mordechai went out again. Mordechai was the tzadik hador, right? He was he was the tzadik of that time. Right, so everyone was looking at Mordechai when he went out. Okay, we keep learning about this idea of Riyas Pnei Tzaddik, right? And now when they saw the Tzaddik, they saw the Tzaddik with all of these colors. Now these colors were special colors. These colors were also the colors that we found in the Mishkan. Right? These were the colors that we found. These are, these are very spiritual colors. These are colors that are also found up on high. Whatever that means. Again, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I can't explain to you what it means that the colors are up on high. But the Zaya says that there are, there are colors up on high. I don't exactly, I can't. You take it for whatever, whatever that means, okay? That's the thing of looking at the tzaddik. Again, when you see the tzaddik, you don't really understand what you're looking at. The same thing, you see these colors, it's magnificent, right? The colors were very majestic, very, very, very beautiful colors, right? You see the tzaddik, the tzaddik is so beautiful. The Riyas Pnei Tzaddik, you see something special, right? You see something special from the tzaddik. Because you have to look at the, at the, at the, at the beauty and the, and the splendor of the tzaddik itself. When you see the tzaddik, you see something special. You see someone that worked on themselves, someone that, that made something of themselves. And you see, and you see how close they are to their Rabbi And you see how much they accomplished in their Torah study. And then you feel like you want to become part of that. You want that as well. Right? As it says, the Navi Yeshaya says, Melech the king with his beauty, right? 
techezena einecha. Right, look at the, it's, 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 again, the word to, like, tachazi, look good, right? Like, you know, the Zaya says, tachazi, come and see, right? See good, techezena, look good at the, at the, at the, at the, at the eyes. Kemevayi b'maki maka, shayadei zeh layhudim maisa oira zu teira, ki yikir is galas b'yurei ha-teira, hu al yadei ha-res p'nei ha-tzadik, kemevayi b'teira, we, we, we learned so much, again, when you see the tzadik, so then it, it straightens out the person's mind. It lets the person then study more Torah. The person may, be a bit, may have come into the tzaddik and he may have felt a little bit haughty. Right? He may have felt, oh, you know, I, I also I accomplished stuff. And then when he realizes, he sees the, how special the tzaddik is, it puts him, makes the person more humble. And again, when we make the person more humble, the person studies Torah for the right reasons and then that, and that makes him more humble. And then he stu- can, can then study more Torah. Right? And then he can then use the Azaz to Kedusha when he needs the Azaz to Kedusha. Okay, let's see. Okay. So far, any questions on this? Uh, this idea about Mordechai going out in front of the king with the beautiful so colors? What was happening with the Jews? So when, when Haman came on the scene, yeah. the Jews were very, very involved in the, the society of the uh, Ashmerosh. What happened now? Is it changed now? Are you saying that they now Mordechai you know, represented the Torah? But Mordechai now was the politics. He was the politics. No, Jews like politics, right? Jews always like to be in politics, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I, I don't know if they did that. Feel, look, <laughs> again, again, that, but we're saying the thing changed now the same way that they were looking up before at Haman and they were looking up at Achashverosh. Now it changed. Now they were looking at the Tzaddik. Hashem worked it out, and now that something can change, they can make, they can be a change. Because don't forget, you know, we were supposed to have the, the, the Binya Beis Amikdash was coming up very soon, mm-hmm. right? Shortly after this, the Beis Amikdash was built, right? Right, the, by Hashemi, unbelievable, right? So again, Hashem was really guiding the whole thing to really change our mindset from that gullus to bring us into the into into the geula of of the second bias. It was a, you know, I mean, the whole idea, the whole way, the whole second bias was built was very interesting with her, with the, right? <laughs> it, was, it was a very interesting history, the whole, right? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You said it's Before this, history. right? It was, it was built by, it wasn't built by the, 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 it wasn't built by Jews. It was really built by, uh, the Persian, the, yeah. The Persians. Well, whoever, Hordes was, where was he from? He was, is that Esther's? Oh, oh, Herodias was um, Herodian. Hmm? Herodian. Herodian, yeah, that's what it was Herodias. He was the one that, that, that really took care of it. He came up with the whole idea to bring the water and all those things. Unbelievable. Anyway, anyway, so yeah, like you were saying, yeah, so Jews were involved with the with the with the with the with the, uh, with, with Achashverosh and the and the and the and the government and the whole thing. But now it changed. That all changed, and now Mordechai is now in charge. So now they have to, they, they'll still look in politics, but now they see the tzaddik. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's magnificent when you think about what happened. He now became the politics. He was... <laughs> well, the, 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 similar to the Joseph, Yosef in, uh, in Egypt. Yes. And he also, you know, became like the viceroy. He was, he, he didn't like, he yeah. was the viceroy. Yeah, he, he was, the, was yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So Mordecai, that's what he became here too. That's right, that's yeah, right. Joseph wasn't identified as a Jew. No, that's right. Uh, no, Mordecai was, no, no, Yosef was identified as a Jew. He was always said he's a Yehudi. Yosef always said when he came to Mitzrayim, he said that he was a Yehudi. He identified, he identified with it being a Jew. Yeah, they called him a Hebrew slave. They called him a Hebrew slave, slave. exactly. Yeah, they yeah. called. They knew he was Jewish. He said, "I'm a Jew." I, I'm a <laughs> no, 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 no. He 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 camouflaged that. But even if you think about it, so much so that they had to eat separately because Yosef wasn't able to eat with the Mitzrayim because he was Jewish. Right? right? But even when, when they had that, when they came to have the meal, and they all sat down, he put the things down for them, right? It was a, they, they eat separately. So the brothers should have realized then there's something funny here. <laughs> Why are we eating only with this guy? <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable. We it's unbelievable. We weren't out of Egypt yet, but we were Jewish? What? 
we weren't taken out of Egypt yet as a people. No, but we were still the children of Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, right? We were, we were, we were, we were becoming, we were, it was in the process of becoming the nation. Right, with the process of coming the nation. Okay, <clears throat> there's so many, so many things you could talk about these uh, over here. But yeah. okay, let let's stick let's stick with the let's stick with the lesson. Besimcha ze yamtuf kemaisha darshus sham the mesechtes megillah kol amikra ze the whole pasuk like who the mice oyer besimcha isasem v'yikar kain tilav. Right, we say that every month of Shabbos, right? Right, we say those words every time, every month of Shabbos, we say it in the Havdalah, right? Mm-hmm. So if so you want to see more about it, you can look at it on Tezai and Amid Beis and Megillah, you'll see more on that. Ki Yom Tov, Ika Kiddusha Say Me'at Tzadik, the Yom Tov, when it comes to a holiday, the main, uh, main Kiddusha comes again from the Tzadik, and watch a Mechabal Kiddusha's Yom Tov, Mechabal Pnei Tzadik. In other words, we know that whenever there was a, a holiday, right, so people would always go to their Rebbe for the, tzad, for the holiday, right? The Rias Pnei Tzadik, you go for the, the holiday, okay. In all, in all circles, right? In the yeshiva world, right? The guys would go back to the yeshiva. They want to be with the Rosh Yeshiva, right? Hasidim would always travel from wherever they were to try to get to the, to the Rebbe for, for, for Yom Tov, right? Because again, the whole, the, Yom Tov, the whole idea of the holiday is to be with the Tzadik. You want to learn more about the holiday. You want to feel the holiday, right? So you do that when you come to the Rebbe, right? And therefore we know when it comes to the to the holiday, you're supposed to go to your to your to your rabbi, to your rabbi and you're supposed to be Makabal Pnei Rabbi, go go visit your Rebbe when it comes to the holiday. Okay? You ever hear this before? No. No? People do that. Well, People that's go- the whole thing of the woman. That's where it started. No, Uman is a different thing. Uh-huh. Uman, Uman is, Uman is, no, here we're talking about in general, when it comes to Sukkis, when it comes to Shavuos, when it comes to uh, Pesach, you go see the, your Rebbe when it comes to the holiday. See the Rebbe, Riyaz Pnei Tzadik, see the Tzadik. We go to Uman for different reasons, you're not, you're not, you don't see Rabbi Nachman. Right. right, right, okay, this is a little bit different. Here we're talking about Riyaz Pnei Tzadik, okay? Okay. Okay, now. Because again, on the Yom Tif, the Tzaddik is so connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, they shine so much, more, so much more so. So again, when you see the Tzaddik, it causes a bigger effect. And it causes that it's night to Samayach. It makes your mind realign itself. Right, the guy may think I was doing so well. He comes to the tzaddik and he puts him. The tzaddik helps put not not by him necessarily doing it. He just sees the tzaddik, and that really puts a new perspective on the person. That's the way we Like he says, the simchaze yomtiv she shehu bechinas kabbalas pnei rabbi she chayavim lekabel biyomtiv we are obligated to see the tzaddik on yomtiv again because the whole idea of the of the yomtiv is really we were supposed to be oily regal on the yomtiv right we're supposed yeah, to go to the base of migdash we don't have the base of migdash right because when you went to the base of migdash you also felt the same thing you saw the grandeur you saw the glory of the base of migdash you saw the rabbi nishlan you saw this you felt the shechina. Right. right, they they also help fix the mind, they re- realign the mind. Right, but we don't have that. So instead, we see the tzaddik because the tzaddik is an aspect of the base hamikdash. Mm-hmm. Okay, which also helps realign the mind to re- reset the person's thinking and to, to guide him in the right uh, in the right path of thinking. When it says sasan, right, the gemara is, is telling you the, the the gemara says that sasan is mila. Okay, Maishu Rabbeinu was always, uh, he was, he was, uh, he was uh, separated from his wife. Again, he wasn't not separated from his wife because he had any, any uh, you know, he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't love his wife and he didn't want to be with his wife. No, he did not because uh, he separated from his wife because he never knew when HaKadosh Baruch would come to see, would, would come to him in a vision. And if Hakadosh Baruch would come to him in the vision, then he couldn't he couldn't be impure, right? He had to be pure. So therefore, Maisha Beinu was pure. So again, so the tzaddik, the whole idea of the tzaddik is kedusha sabris. The tzaddik is very very pure, very very pure. A very very interesting thing, you know. Really, uh, uh, the tzaddikim can be can can uh, uh, can. Uh, 
uh, are always working on being Mekadish themselves, right? They're working on Mekadish, what they eat, right? How they eat. They're Mekadish, their goof, uh, all different aspects of the goof. But one thing's very strange that they can't do, they can't, you, you can't really be Mekadish when you go to the bathroom, right? Yeah. Going to the bathroom, there's nothing you can elevate, right? It is what it is, right? Person has to go relieve themselves. But it's very interesting that we say in the in the in the in the Asha Yotzer, We talk about only in the Asha Yotzer, right? You don't find the Kisei Akavid. You don't mention in any other blessing. Do you mention the Kisei Akavid in any other blessing? What does that mean? In front of the Lifnei Kisei Chivaydecha, the Akadosh Baruch Hu's throne of glory. We, we mentioned the there? we mentioned the throne of glory in the in the in the bracha after we make the Asha Yatza. It's interesting idea, right? Interesting idea. Now, so, so and it also says the Gemara says that the the tshuva magas at kisei akavit. Tshuva magas at kisei akavit. You heard that before? Tshuva can touch, can reach up to the kisei akavit also. You ever hear that before? Tshuva magas al kisei akavit. Right? You heard that, right? Mm-hmm. So what is so? How do you put this together? How do you put this together? That even if a person feels that he's so low, he's so, so low, and, and he, he can't come back to the rabbinic Islam or anything, but he makes that bracha, even when I'm in the path, I can connect to HaKadosh Baruch Hu afterwards. So if I felt I'm so low, if I'm so low, Shuvah's Megas, Atkisek, in the same place as by the bathroom. The only place you make it. Unbelievable idea, right? Wow. You make the connection, right? Make that connection. You ever see that, David? Yeah, I've seen it. I never thought about it before. No, Kisei reaches but again, the Tzadikim teach us these, these concepts. That's what we need to understand. The Tzadikim can take the guy, like we learned, that the Tzadik, the higher the Tzadik is, the lower he can go down, right? The, the, higher, the higher the Tzadik is, the lower he can go down without getting, without getting affected by it. So you can't mention Hashem's name in the bathroom. No, not in the bathroom. No. But as soon as you're done, you're talking about his his holy seat, his holy uh, chair, throne. holy throne. throne, throne. Let's use the word throne, throne. right? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I mean, just yeah, and that's the, the, the only time. That's the only time. You know, you won't find another blessing, another bracha that we make that we talk about the chisei chivadecha. And that's why maybe the, the rabbi said something about that is a very it's a very you know, special bracha. It's one of the most special brachas that we have. Right, the Kodesh Baruch Hu is Chol Baso Mafli Lasli. He does it. He 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 heals us in the most wondrous, awesome way. And if you talk to doctors, they'll say they sometimes they see people get they're healed. They have no idea how. They have no idea. Yeah. They have no idea, right? Mm-hmm. It's 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 fascinating. Okay. Anyway, now okay. Vizel Eviyakar Elu Tfilin. Wow! Look at this. Sasha, go, okay, have a good day. Have a good, no, no, have a good day, Sasha. Be matzliach, okay? Now, so one second. So we said so far, it says, Ira was Tyra. Sasan is, what is Sasan? Mila, 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 Bris Mila, Kedusha, right? Now we're, now we're saying, the Yakar, Zet Tfilin, Yakar. Tfilin is known as Tfilin is known as the as is is, is is special. Tfilin is known as the pe'er, is known as the splendor, right? The yokers at Tfilin. Ki ki kol what? What did you say, Barbara? You want to say yeah, something? On, yeah. No, no. <laughs> ki kol bechinasai elu kilulim betfilin, because all of these things are found in the Tfilin. The Tfilin teach you kedushas habris, right? You have to be holy. The tefillin teach, right? Because we learned you can't put on the tefillin when you go to the... I, I thought about that other thing because you can't use your tefillin when you go to the bathroom, right? Yeah, right. So it teaches you Kedusha. Tefillin teaches you Kedusha, right? You can't... You have to take them away, right? We can't have gas. We can't pass gas, we learned with the tefillin, yeah. right? Can't do that because the tefillin are holy, right? Right? And then, and then the tefillin also teach me the idea of Torah, right? Because the tefillin realigned my mind. It has the same thing to pair, right? The same thing. The tefillin helped me to realign my mind. So when I see the tzaddik, when I look at my tefillin, if I really study them, and I realize how they were worked on and how beautiful they were made, it also helps realign my mind. That was once an animal. It was once an animal, a smelly animal. Yeah, yeah. You ever go to one of these stalls, you know, where all the, the, like, where all the cows are? My gosh, is it? <laughs> Stinks. There's yeah. a Torah 
skin sitting right there. Yeah, yeah, but now it's be but now it's but now it's beautiful. Yeah, but now it was worked on. It's beautiful now. So you right? really can use the whole cow. So, uh, what? You can use the whole cow. You can eat the meat. And yes. You can use his, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. It's unbelievable. I, they really. And you can make a blessing on everything, right? <laughs> it's beautiful, right? Shehem bechines chayim nitzchim. That's what the idea of is chayim nitzchim. We keep learning about this. Take the time and make the time eternal, right? The tefillin, the yom tev, the tzaddik, bris, right? And the beis hamikdash, of course, all help us realize that what's important in life, right? So when I realize what's important in life, I spend more time on what's important in life. That's what it means realigning my thoughts. Right, I thought it was important to see the news. I thought it was important to know the weather. I thought it was important to understand the politics. And now I realize whether well, that's all nonsense. The weather's going to be what the weather's going to be. The politicians are always going to do their stupid things that they always did and they always will do. Right? They're a bunch of buffoons. All of them. <laughs> all of them. I don't know if this is important, but it's to align our thoughts with Hashem's will. Yeah, His will with, through His Torah. Through His Torah. Through the Torah. Right. Right, all through seeing the tzaddik, that's another reason why. So Nasa just explains this. Why are you going to the why do people go to the Rosh Hashiva? Why do people go to the tzaddik? He's explaining why this is the reason why. Yeah. Now again, Rab is not telling you to do something new. This is what people do anyway. So he's telling you now, I'm going to explain to you why are they going to the tzaddik? Why are they going? Why do they feel compelled to go to the yeshiva, to be back at the yeshiva, to be with the rosh yeshiva? Why do they feel compelled to do that? This is the reason why. Because they have it on, they, whether they know what's going on or not, but when they see the tzaddik, again, it, it helps their mind, it realigns their mind. And this is really the, the inside what's going on behind it. Okay. Uh, okay, so that was the idea. This is what we had uh, in Chafhe. Any questions on this? So Rav is saying, to, telling us like this. So when Mordechai went out, right? Again, he used he used uh, his holy arrogance to be able to do this, right? Now, so it didn't, but it didn't come to him. He knew he was the tzaddik, so he had to go and he had to represent himself as the tzaddik. Now, he can't go like a schlepper. He did go like a schlepper before, right? He was going. He was walking around with his sackcloth. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, Mordechai was walking around with slack, sackcloth, right? Mm -hmm. But now he's going out. Now is now that now, now now is not the time for that. Now is the time. I need to lift up the Jewish people. So I'm not going to lift up the Jewish people. I'm going to wear these beautiful clothes. They're going to see these colors. They're going to see something majestical. So then they're going to uh, re realign them. They were thinking they were so happy to see the the palace, and they love to see all of these things. So now. The tzaddik is wearing it. Was he wearing the big day kahuna? No, 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 no. He wore no. the big, big day malchus. No, no Achashverosh no. wore the big day right. kahuna. No, 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 no. Mordechai would never do that. No, Mordechai would never do that. It's, 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 you're not allowed to. You know because yeah. that, that, that's that's that, that, that's meila, right? You can't be you can't be maya. You're not allowed to use you're not allowed to use things of hegdish, right? So when we're learning Torah, yeah, we're not really aware of it. But that is being in front of the tzaddik. Uh, on some level, on some yes, level. because again, yeah. you're studying the teachings of the tzaddik. the tzaddik. Right, right. Because I never really knew when I was younger about tzaddikim and to go to them and who they were, but yet learning from a tzaddik, from his safari, yeah. is a way of... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a way of seeing the tzaddik, right? Getting to know the tzaddik. How do you get to know? Do you see the teachings of the tzaddik? It seems like a big secret who the tzaddikim are of our times. It's always a secret. That's why you have to so daven. You know, Rabbi Nachman says you have to daven to Hakadosh Baruch Hu and you're his brothers to reveal the tzaddik, right? To reveal the tzaddikim. Okay. All right. So, so okay. There's so many more things we could say on this, but uh, but okay. Now it's. Do uh, um, you have any questions on this idea, this concept? So we learned some beautiful things. Ayra zu tefila, sasain is meila, is bris meila kedusha, right? And then we said yikar is the tefillin, right? So we he's just dashing out the pasuk. And then it was laihudim isa ayra v'simcha v'sasain v'yikar, right? Laihudim isa ayra v'simcha v'sasain v'yikar. So now you know ayra zu tayra. That's Torah. Sasain is is bris meila, which is kedusha's habris. Right? Sanctity, holiness, right? And we know that your car is the tefillin. All in that, all the things. So now when you, in Matzah Shabbos, when you're saying Abdullah, you know what you're saying. 
When you say when you say Ayra, that's Torah. Sasain is Mila, right? And your car is talking about the Tfila. Okay? Any questions? You go, or yeah. Yeah, you say the words. So now you know words. now you know now you can remember now you know what the words are. You can write if you want to write it down in your if you use a different special bench or you write something, so write it down and make a little note so you can remember what you learned. Right? You can write it in the in the place where you say you have dull, wherever you read it from. Yeah. Right? So you can write down where it says where it says Oira, so write down there that is Torah. So sign that is Milan. And then but your car, that is Tfilin. So then you'll remember what you just learned over here and you understand what okay? That's an idea. Okay? All right, let's go on. Let's look at let's look at Chavav, okay? Now so afterwards, after we so we spoke about now that we spoke about the beauty of the tzaddik, and we learned about what happened on Purim, right? Now we're gonna we're gonna understand we're gonna understand now how how uh, Haman was actually pushed put down. So we learned just now with Mordechai how we were lifted up, right? We saw the tzaddik, and then we real we realigned our, our thinking. We thought it was important to be close with the king because then the king will be good for us. But then we realized the real king is Hashem. It's not Achas Feirish, right? It's, it's unbelievable. Again, if you think about it, you know, we think it's funny that we have a guy like Biden and Putin, these buffoons that we have today. Look, we had Akash Shreyrus back then, too. Another, another fool. <laughs> yeah. So they say whenever in the Megillah, whenever you see the word king, it's really talking about Hashem. Let me say it right. If it says Hamelech plain, if it says Hamelech Akash Shreyrus, then it's talking about Hashem. Uh-huh. If it says Hamelech, Ha-Melech without Ha-Melech. a name, that's talking about Hashem. Okay. Right? Some Megillahs they have, they're called, they make a Hamelech Megillah, where each column, each column, is, uh, under the first word on each column is Hamelech. No. No. Yeah, did you ever see that? No. No? You, you know, right? That's all right. Hamelech Megillah. Those are special. Yeah, Baruch Hashem. Okay. Kesitra Acher. Okay, Chavav, 26. 26 is very special, right? Yud Kei Vav Kei, right? 26. Right? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no problem. The, the, the sign of impurity is the same as the impurity of the snake. Now, we're talking about the snake, not, not the pets that people have today, not those little things, right? We're talking about the Nachash HaKadmoni, right? The, the original snake, that snake that was found up in, in Gan Eden, right? That, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, caused, uh, that caused the... Uh, to influence uh, Chava to eat from the Eitz Adas Taivara. Bechines Klipas Haman Amalek, which is connected to the Klipa of Haman Amalek. Amalek is part of that, right? We said about, we said, the Tfilin of Rabbeinu Tam, right? So we said when we have the Tfilin of Rabbeinu Tam, we're connected back to Allah B'mach Shava, what Hashem thought about creating the world. When He thought about creating the world, originally He wanted to make the world with Din, Right? He wanted to make the world first within. But then he realized that it's, it, it won't, he, he realized it's not going to work. He had to d- destroy some world. Whatever he did, okay, whatever it was, it's a whole, you could study about that for many, many, many years, right, to understand that. But, but he also, but we understand that Hashem made that chol aponoi, right, that voided space, right, the black hole, right, like they call the black hole, right? He did it with him. Hashem made the black hole, though. Right? He made that black hole. Right? We spoke about the other day, right? The, Hashem made that black hole, that voided space. That was called the Cholul Aponoi, right? The vacated space. We call it the vacated space. You can call it the black hole. It's the same thing, right? Why? Because Hashem ret- retracted his light, right? So what happened? Amalek showed up. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> Hashem left. Amalek came in. Hashem sent him. He sent him in. Okay, it was really Hashem's plan. It wasn't that Amalek can't do anything without Hashem. Hashem wanted Amalek to go in there, right? Why? So that way in the world, there could be, <clears throat> there could be the, uh, the idea of the Hest upon him where Hashem can hide himself, right? Because if, if Hashem is, is uh, if he's very uh, uh, known in the world, so then how is anyone ever going to make the wrong decision, Right? The same way when you know that there's someone in the room watching you, you don't make a mistake. But if we really understood that Hashem is mamish with us all the time, how would we ever make a mistake? If we really understood that. Yeah, I understand. That's why Shulchan Aruch starts with that, right? But again, so then Amalek <laughs> came in. Amalek came in in order to allow for, in order to allow for Bechira. Right? We need free choice. Hashem wanted us to have free choice. 
Right? It's, it, that was what that was Hakadosh Baruch Hu's will to have free choice in the world. So a man can make him can can choose something else. He can. But the problem is, but the, what he's supposed to do is to see through all the other nonsense and choose Hashem. That's what we're supposed to do. But unfortunately, not everybody does that. Right? So we're learning here what we can do. When we understand that the Nachash is the same as the Amalek, which is the same as, as the Nachash HaKadmoni and Haman. Shemisham Nimtzach Midas Geus Shaboilam. And that's where the idea of arrogance comes to the world, Amalek. Amalek says there's no holiness, right? We learned that last week. We talked about the Bikurim, right? Yeah. Right after, right? We, had, we brought the Bikurim, right? We, we, Moshe gives us the mitzvah of Bikurim. He tells us about when, right after, right after we read about Amalek, right? Right, we read about Amalek. The next yeah. thing is, now bring the Bikurim. Oh. Why, 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 what does Bikurim have to do with Amalek? Amalek says that there's no, there's nothing holy in the world. You can't sanctify anything. It's all, it's all the world. It is what it is. So Hashem says, no, Moshe says, now bring the Bikurim. Take the worldly thing. Take the fruit and now bring that up and bring it, make it holy. You understand? That's the connection over there. Okay. Hey, Mizgabrim biyoyser alzeh so what they're trying to do is to always to put down the tzaddikim. They try to tell you that, the tzaddik, what the tzaddik, what are you talking about? There's no tzaddikim, there's no this. That's what the Amalek said. That's what they try to tell you. What are you wasting your time? What are you doing? What are you doing? Right? That's what they try to do. Because the whole idea of coming to the tzaddikim and learning from the tzaddikim give us true life. That's where our life comes from. Because we have the Torah. Torah is Zulchayim, right? Torah is life. It wakes up, it wakes up the spiritually dead. Not necessarily the physically dead, but the spiritually dead, right? Right? Kamara says, right? A, a Russia is called uh, de- dead even when he's alive. He's spiritually dead, not physically dead. He's a, he's a walking dead man because he's spiritually, he's just, he, he, he's oblivious to what's going on as far as holiness. So the Gemara says, if, if you're not fulfilling your tafkid in life, finding Hashem, so then you're not alive. Because we said that the whole idea is learning Torah, that's Chayim Nitzchim, right? That's eternal life. But if the person is not involved at all in eternal life, he's just involved in the nonsense of the world, so then that's not alive. Because he's not preparing anything himself for the next world, right? However, it seems though Hashem set it up in a way that, I mean, how would I have known even to look for him, to discover him? Because he's hidden. Yes. I guess the only way is because generation by generation. My father's Jewish, so somehow that... Yeah, we have that continuity back to to Harsina, right? Also, your own curiosity, you know, where did this come from? You know, how did, how did Avram Avinu do it? Right? Avram Avinu, right? Avram Avinu just looked, he made, he, he, he came to, to a realization, it can't be what they're telling me. And they're telling me this God, the God of the rain, and this is the God of this, and that's the God of that. But who's running all of that? Right, and today they don't say the God, now they say gases. Gases. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Accidentally. No, I'm just trying to understand. No, Avram Avinu understood like this. He said he understood, Avram Avinu understood that these are all, they could be ministers. Mm-hmm. Right, they give me, but who? But who's the who's the who's running it? Who's the prime minister? Who's running all of the ministers? Right? Yeah, there's a moon and there's a sun and there's the stars and there's and there's the water and the fire and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Okay, but but who's running it? Right, right. You understand? That's what I mean. Wanted to figure out. Who put all this in place? Yeah. Who put it in place and who's running it? <laughs> I guess the thing that made it was because of Brit Milah and Passover. Those two things, if our, when our families do that, it's causing us to think about Hashem. Hashem yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 well Pesach, Passover is the, whole, the holiday of Emunah. Yeah. Right? The whole idea is Emunah. Believing that we were taken out of Egypt, believing we became a nation. B'ni B'chayri Yisrael. Right? And in Passover, we had also, we have the Tefillin. Right? Hashem told us in Mitzrayim, when we were in Mitzrayim, He told us about the Tefillin. We didn't necessarily have the tefillin at that point, but he told us about the tefillin. Shabbos, we knew about. Mila, we knew about, right? Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. You want to say something about Simcha? 
No, no, I'm looking ahead here. You explain this about that. <laughs> They're trying to make always a, a, a separation between those that are dovic, those that are clinging on to the Torah. They try to take you away from it. But why, why are we talking about this now? Because we said the whole idea of Anova and Gaiva, right? You have to have the know when to use the holy chutzpah, when to know to use the humility, right? So whenever you're studying Torah, you have to be humble. Because the Torah will make you humble, right? And when someone tries to come against you, now you have to use your arrogance. <laughs> don't tell me. You don't want to study Torah, that's on you. Don't, don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me what to do. I do what I want to do. I, I'm t- I know the truth. You think you know the truth. Good. You keep your truth to yourself. I'll do what I need to do. But, but again, not to listen to them. Don't even pay any attention to them. Right, so the whole idea, the whole idea of the of the Malchus, again, the Tfilin, this is why we're learning still in Tfilin, right? Because the whole idea of the Tfilin is to know that I'm bound. I'm bound in my thoughts with HaKadosh Baruch I'm bound. I'm bound with my thoughts. Like we said, the, the Dalit on the Tfilin, right? The Dalit is David HaMelech, right? The little one in the back, the Dalit. It doesn't have, it doesn't have any Parshias in it, but it's intricately part of my tefillin, right? Yeah. right? And we say that that's Bitzrora Bitzrora Chayim. That's binding me, intertwining me with true life, right? That's what, that's what the, 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 the David HaMelech is, right? To understand, to understand that. So this is what we're trying to say. In other words, really they're trying uh, always to try to take me away, to veer from Hashem. Right? They're trying to get in, try to infiltrate, constantly trying to infiltrate. But we have to use our holy chutzpah in order to, 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 to ward them off, right? To, 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 to get rid of them. writes in Lahafrit Shalom, Bain Malchus They want to make a separation between the Malchus, the Malchus of Hashem, and the Mayach and the Ma'ach. They want to separate this. They want to, they want to make a they want to, they want to make a separate, they don't want to keep they we don't want to keep it together. The Shechina is Malchus. The Shechina is Malchus. Shechina is really, really the Shechina is a code word for all, for Nefesh, Kloli, Yisro. Right? The Shechina is really all of the embodiment of all the Neshamas, of all the Jewish people together make up the Shechina. That is what the Shechina is. All the embodiment of all the Jewish people together, all the soul, all the Neshamas, Together, that is what the Shechina is. That's the Shechina. Right? So they're trying to make a separation between the Shechina, Malchus, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Really, Hashem, the Shechina, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu is together. It's connected. Why? Because we know that every Nisham is a Chelek Yelikami Mal, is a part of Hashem. So how can you separate the Shechina from Hashem? If it's, the, it, the Shechina is Hashem. It's one with Hashem. So they're trying to make a separation. Okay, there's souls. Okay, fine. But there's God. There's, there's, no, there's no connection. No, no. We know that there is a connection. Because again, again, we have the Chelik Elikami Mal. The Chelik Elikami Mal teaches me that that's a mamash, a piece of God, right? That's on the Shaman. It's with us. We have to remember that always, always. We have the Shaman inside of us. Isn't that an amazing thing to think about? We have a Shaman. What does that mean? That means we have a mamash, a chela, piece of Hashem inside of us. Wherever we go. W, you okay? Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. The whole is gabros, ayadei midas hageris. The whole, the whole, the whole idea, the whole idea is through gay, is through arrogance. Through arrogance. Shemisham nimshach kol hamachlekes ala tzadik yames. When they use the wrong, when they use the wrong arrogance, right? When they use the wrong arrogance. Right, the, 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 the impure arrogance. It's only there for what? To separate, to se- make a separation, a machlekes between the tzaddikim. Mm-hmm. But we learned before, really, what's the whole point of the, uh, the, the machlekes between the tzaddikim? It's there to help us. It's there to help us, to help us, again, our minds. When we hear one tzaddik is saying this and the other tzaddik is saying that, they go, wow, wow, what, what, well, how could it be? How could that be? How come he's saying this and he's saying that? And it makes us, it startles us a little bit sometimes. When we hear that what's going on, there's a demachlikus between the tzaddikim. So he said it's supposed to startle us. Why? Because that's like the thunder in our mind. <clears throat> right? 
You remember that, uh, Mordechai? Of course, it's helping us to make our own... It helps wake us up. Wake us up. In other words, if we did take. everything right, we wouldn't have to hear the machlekes between the tzaddikim. If we didn't have to, if our mind was set, if we were set on the right path, we wouldn't have to feel, we wouldn't have to have that. And we learned the same idea when we daven and we say the words loud, loud. We cause, we cause like a thunder in our minds, which causes the, which causes the rain to come down to the heart. You know that we have a lot. We, we, we have we have a, we have precipitation going on while we daven. When you daven and you say the words, right? right. So you so you and you're listening to what you're saying. You listen to your own words that you're saying. Right. Yeah. Don't listen to anyone else. Listen to the words yeah. you're saying out of your mouth. It's wow. Your mind starts to think, wow, wow, wow. What did I just say? Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. And it causes something in the mind. It causes us. It startles the mind a little bit, right? You're saying it. You're not listening to somebody. You're listening to what you're saying. Wow, I said that. Wow. <laughs> and what it does is it causes then it causes the mind to then send something down to the heart. Something beautiful down to the, to wake up the heart. To make that connection. That's how you make the connection between the mind and the heart. We're trying to always make a connection between the mind and the heart. Right? The joke I always say is, uh, Rabbi Weinberger once said that, you know, the, the, the misnagdim, they make sure to wear a tie. Right, the, mess, not the ones that don't like the chassid, right? They make sure they wear a tie and they make it nice and tight. Right, they put the tie on, they make it nice and tight, so it has to look proper, right? Why? Because they want to keep whatever's in the mind in the mind. They don't want it to go down to the heart, right. so they make it nice and tight, so it can't get from the mind to the heart. Right, you understand? <laughs> but the whole idea, but the, really, the whole idea is to connect the mind, all the things in the mind, into the heart. That's really what we're always working on doing: connecting the mind with the heart. So my feelings are connected to my thoughts. To make my feelings to be in line with, aligned with my thoughts. Can I say something? Yeah, sure. So in the Siddur, I think it was in the Siddur, I learned something about quiet yelling. Yes, yes, yes. That, so one of the things I'm learning to, is that when I'm saying the words, I'm quietly yelling the words. Okay, but really hearing. That's, no, 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 that the, connecting the heart. Okay, okay. Wait a there's, 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 there's the silent scream. You're talking about the silent scream. It's a silent scream. And that's a, that's a, that, that, how, how could you have a silent scream, right? That's something you feel inside. Yeah. Yeah. But here we're talking. This was this this lesson was a little bit different. When you say the words, and you listen to the words, so that causes something in the mind. The scream is something else. That's where that's connected to IA. Whatever, that, that's... Not, but I'm not sure, I, for some reason I thought it was saying like the Amida or, or the Davide. Oh, the Amida, yes, the Amida you can't say out loud. That you can't say right. out loud. But the Psuka and the Zimmer you can't say out loud. Right. You should say out loud. You should say the words and at least hear the words. You don't have to scream the words, right? If you want to hear people scream, you go to Carlin, Right. You go to Carlin, wow, now they, they, you'll hear, you'll hear. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's wonderful. <laughs> no, 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 if you ever go one time, you ever, you never, you, have, you, have you gone to a base medrash with Carlin, right? The Carlin is, wow, there's, you, you can't fall asleep on that, David. it's impossible. <laughs> What's Carlin? Carlin, Carlin, the Carlin, the Chassid, Carlin. Think they've got a base medrash in Jerusalem? Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you, why? In Yerushalayim, I did have one in Muncie also, I used to go, used to, yeah. Yeah? You just listen and I open the window, open the window, you, you know exactly what they're up to. <laughs> you know exactly what they're up to. <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful. Ah, okay. Um, okay. Okay. And what's going on? They're trying to always stop people, prevent people from coming close to Hashem. That's what they're trying to do. They don't want them to come close to the tzaddikim because they know if they come close to the tzaddikim, they'll come back to Hashem, and the other side doesn't like when we come back to Hashem. So therefore they try to avoid people from coming close to the tzaddikim, so they make machlaikis on the tzaddikim, they make them, they try to belittle the tzaddikim, so then people wouldn't want to be in, connected to the tzaddikim, unfortunately. But Oz, hamaychim behelim, then the mind is then concealed, the hester, it's, it's, it's hidden. Ki eina misnoitzitzim, ki im ayadei riyaz p'nei tzaddik, because only if you go to the tzaddik can you, have, can, you be, can you be helped by the tzaddik. You have to be by the tzaddik in order to be helped. 
Remember I told you that, that cute story? And we'll say, maybe I'll tell you one more time. There was a bunch of Hasidim that, um, that every Shabbos, right? They would, daven, they would come to Davini in Shabbos morning, right? And then when they came to Musaf, the, uh, the, uh, the Rebbe would stay in Musaf for, for, for two hours. He would, Musaf would go on for two hours. And they were just sitting around, right? They davened Musaf, they did five minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, whatever the Shemayin Etzray was. Right, but he's going on this. So, so they, would, they would sit down and they would learn and whatever, but they wanted to go home. They wanted to have to make Kiddush. But they didn't leave. So one of the guys one time decided, and you don't have an idea. Why don't we do this? We'll, we'll finish Shemayin Etzray. We'll go home. We'll make Kiddush. And then we'll come back in like 45 minutes, an hour later back. We'll come back and we'll, 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 uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be right on time. <laughs> It'll be great. Okay, so they said, okay, next week we'll do that. So next week they do that. And they all, they finish my nest, right? they all quietly leave. And then they come back uh, uh, 45 minutes later, right? And they see the Rebbe sitting in his chair and he's learning. He said, your shoe was only 45 minutes, right? <laughs> yeah, it was 45 minutes. It wasn't, it wasn't the, an hour and a half. No, no. <laughs> so they said to the Rebbe, Rebbe, what? What happened? What happened? How, how, how come you finished so fast? He says, you think when I'm davening Shemayin Esrei, it takes me so long to daven Shemayin Esrei? He says, no, no, no. When you're here, I'm, I can work on making repairs for all of you guys. I can work on, I, I understand what's going on in the other and the Shemayin so I know what happened, what, what you guys need repairs for. I'm working on that in Shemayin. I'm working on that. But that's when you're here. I can help you. But if you're not here, I can't help you. So I finished right away. But my, my answer doesn't take a long time. <laughs> you understand? It's that the, we don't, we don't, we don't, uh, we have no idea what goes on in the minds of the tzaddik and we have no, no idea. We have no idea what's going on. But there's something going on. There's something that HaKadosh Baruch who always sends us tzaddikim in each generation. We always have tzaddikim in each generation, right? The Tanya talks about that, where the chesed that Hashem made, that he sent the tzaddikim in all the different generations. He didn't put them all in one generation, right? There was a big chesed Hashem. They didn't put them all in one generation. All the tzaddikim go in one generation. So then what will we have? Now that Hashem spread, spreads out the tzaddikim in all the generations. He spreads them out. So we always have some, we always have tzaddikim in the world work making the repairs. And the tzaddikim are very important because they take on a lot of the, the a lot of the uh, responsibility. The Jewish people they take on a lot of the, 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 the yeah okay. So so far we understand that when it talks about when we're talking about this idea of the of of seeing the tzaddik right. So the, 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 there's always opposition trying to be caused by the other side to not that we shouldn't come to the tzaddik. So we shouldn't get the we shouldn't be connected to Hashem. All right uh, the Oz. Then the the the, uh, <coughs> the malchus, which we said is the shechina, right? The malchus is the shechina, right? Is separated from its daida from the beloved. Okay, by days there, hashechina begolus chas v'sholom, and then the shechina falls into the golus, right? Because the, the, if, if we're not when we connect to the tzaddik and we connect our kodesh baruch hu. So they were making that l'shem yichud kutsha brichu shchinte. Right? When we say l'shem yichud kutsha brichu shchinte, what are we talking about? I'm making a, a l'shem yichud. My, 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 my goal here is to unify. L'shem yichud kutsha brichu Hashem ushchinte. I want to make a unification between Hashem and the shchina. Isn't that what it means? Shalom, right? L'shem yichud kutsha brichu shchinte. B'dechilu rechimu. Right, liyachet shem yudke bevavke. I want to take the yudke. I want to connect it to the vavke. Right, making unifications. Whenever we do a mitzvah, we say sometimes we say in the in the city it says some say right l'shem yichud. Right. <laughs> yeah. By the way, anytime it says some say in the city, always say that thing. Where it says when some say, say some you say, always always say. be always be part of the some say. Oh, okay. <laughs> No, you were saying that, yeah, that yesterday you said that in the art scroll city, they write down sometimes it says some say. Yeah. Those are the most important feelers. <laughs> Those are the most beautiful things. So what, what we're trying to constantly do is we're trying to connect Hashem with the Shekhinah. And how do you do that? Through the tzaddikim. The tzaddikim teach us 
They, 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 they were supposed to do that, or else who's going to know that? People say, they, they, they don't think what they're saying. Right? They don't think what they're saying. So if the Shekhinah represents the souls of the Jewish people, yes. you're trying to connect Hashem. Hashem, I want to reconnect Hashem. With, it, it is yeah. connected, but I want to make that connect. Yeah. I, want, I want to be part of part that. Of that connection. Connection. I want to make it part of that connection. Yes, yes. Yeah. I want to be part of that. Like we learned yesterday with the Machsa Zashek, I want to be part of the Mishkan. I want to be, see, I'm trying to do my part in order to connect, rebind the Shina with Hashem. Because the whole world is trying to separate, separate it. Right. Yeah, there's God. Okay, there's a God. If they say, some say there's no God, right? But they, 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 okay, there's a God. But they, that's what does it do with the soul, Jew? What they, hey, that's what they tell you, right? right, right. But what, so we're trying to do is we're trying to say, L'shem I'm trying to bond, re- reconnect Hashem with the Shri. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm doing. That's why I do the mitzvah. That's what the mitzvah does. When I do any mitzvah, that's why we say l'shem yichud. Okay, the interesting idea, right? Yeah. You ever hear that before? No. <laughs> no. I mean, I used to try. I used to say that. Say what? All those kavanas. Yeah, yeah. A kiddush. Okay. My uh, kids. Yeah. Growing up went crazy because I was taking. Too long. Yeah. Forever, because I would also try to think about it. Yeah. So, so what I what I do is. Yeah. No, I'm just saying. No. So, what, so that no. So what you what you can actually do is you just say a little bit before, and yeah, before you know when they when they, when they all come in they're all talking and they're all they're all that stuff right. So I sit down and I just say what I have to say, and, and while they're while they're just uh, chattering well, right. It's not anymore. This was then. Okay, but but any, anyone I'm telling anyone that can do that right. Every time when people come in right, a whole bunch of people they're always talking for 15, 20 minutes right. Hey, I could say a lot of stuff in 15, 20 minutes right. So I could take out that bench. I could say this. I could say everything. I could say uh, right. There's a lot of things you can do. You just have to learn how to you know use your time correctly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But the eight sources, I want to be part of those conversations right. <laughs> I, I want to know what's going yeah. on right. <laughs> okay. Okay, but, but really the whole idea is really to make those connections, to do those things, and again, to do it without, without imposing it on other people. You understand? What I want to do, I do what I need to do. I don't need to impose it upon my wife, upon the kids, and all that. I need to do what I need to do. All right? But it doesn't, I don't have to make it, I don't have to impose them for the time and all of that. So I do it on my time. They you know, time they kiddish, okay, yoyim ashishi, okay, okay, v'sham of the right? And, uh, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's an idea, right? It's an idea that you can do, okay? Can I tell a short story? Yes. And then just one more thing. You know, when, when the kids see, when the kids see you're sitting there and you're saying so, they understand really they're learning what's important. They may be talking and everything, but they see what the, the father's doing this. Yeah. They oh, there's something going on here. I, I understand. I got, I'll look, one day I'll look into that. <laughs> Hopefully, right? We, that's what we pray, right? We pray for the children. Always one day look into it. Yeah. Share your story, so I please. Was in... It was a special uh, service. It was like a, I don't know what. They had a canter there. Okay. And of course, you know, I'm always thinking, ah, they're going so fast. They're going so fast. How can I keep up with these people, you know? And so this canter, when he oh. starts diving, he's going really, really slow. Oh, yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, I said, I can't believe how slow he's going. I said, wait a second, Mordecai. Wait, you can't complain about this. You're always complaining about people going fast. He's going slow, so do something here. So I was in my Sidor and I was learning and that's when it hit me that Hashem was is my father. Ah. So it's like because I went slow and I paid attention to what that's I was what doing. That's what it's all about. It's all that's what it's like when you pay attention. We keep saying when you say the words, yeah. listen to what you say. Hear what you're saying. Yeah. That that makes an effect. Yeah. That's what makes the effect. That affects the person tremendously. It's a beautiful story. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's all it's about. Yeah. T- pay attention pay to attention what, what you're saying. saying. Don't necessarily say anything. And say what you're normally you're saying, saying, but just pay, pay attention, attention to what you're saying. Okay. So we takes away the memshola takes away the dominion of, of the Jewish people. It takes away that the importance of the Jewish people because the Shechina goes in Golis. Because, again, why is the Shechina in Golis? Because we're not connected to Hashem. Right? Connecting to Hashem is when that, that's Geula. Right? You connect to Hashem, then you're, 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 that, that, that is redemption. But when you're disconnected from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, unfortunately, that's, that's what Golis is. Right? Hashem is there and, and, and everyone. 
Benitna la akum, and it's given over to the uh, uh, to the akum. Right? Rabbi Nachman speaks about that in Lakutim Maranik is in other words, in other words, the the nations of the world they take the the memshal, they take the dominion, they take the control, as we yeah. see going on in the world. Right? We see it. Right? Yeah. 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 But they'll tell us we can't build, we can't make a fraud bigger, we can't do this, you don't let it do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Barashoyim shemekablim amalchus umayishlin aleinu chas v'sholem and the Rishoyim, the Rishoyim take the malchus, which is connected to Amalek, right? The Rishoyim, the wicked ones, right? They take the malchus. Instead of the malchus being malchus Hashem, Right, because the Shechina is Malchus, but then they take they take the Malchus, they take the kingship for themselves. The other side takes it, as we see. Because there's always an opposition against the tzaddikim. Now, don't go to the tzaddikim. What are you waste? Come on, it's dangerous. You can't go to Ukraine. Why? Wow, there's a war going. You can't do this. What is all this nonsense? What do they care? What do they? What the? What do they care? If I want to go. I want to go. What do they care? They care about. I mean, two, two yeah. years ago, what happened was the State Department said you shouldn't go to, to Uman for Rosh Hashanah. The United States State Department says don't go to Uman for Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> what? The State Department. What do they have anything to do with Uman? That's what they have to worry about. A couple of guys want to go to Uman. <laughs> No, you look it up. You see, I see. they issued they issued a statement. No, State Department. No, no, it's dangerous. Don't go to Uman. At least they were talking about Uman. See that? <laughs> That's true. They know about Uman. They know yeah. about it. Yeah, they yeah. know. About it. But don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. It's fantastic. It's amazing. Ayudei zeh poigmin bechvaydam. Ayudei zeh ikir agolus kamaisha kasa viyu. Uh, uh, all they were going to do is they're just going to they're going to they're going to they're going to make opposition against the Kodesh Baruch Hu, the Neviim, the, the Holy Neviim, and the, the words of the Neviim, and and through that that's how the the it came the the, the destruction of Yerushalayim because again this was the other thing, in other words the other side is always telling us and even in the time of even the time in the Neviim, eh, don't listen to the Neviim. Right, look at the example we said. Shaul Anavi, uh, Shmuel Anavi, Shmuel Anavi tells Shaul to kill out Agag. What does he do? No, nah, no, he listens to Dayan. Here's the prime example, and that's where that's where that's where the whole Churban started. All of that they came from that. Uh, uh, Shaul Amelus Malchus went down right after that. Okay, Vizeb uh, Bechinas. Should we can, we can continue a few more yeah, minutes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, here, oh, this is amazing. This is amazing. Sara Menu. Sara Menu was taken to Bas Pari. Right? She came down. There was a there was a famine. There was a famine in Eretz Yisrael. And where was their food? It was in Egypt. So what does Avram Avinu do? He says, okay, we have to go down to, to Mitzrayim. And then, and then Avram Avinu sees, says on the way there, he says, oh, he realizes, hey, you know, you're a beautiful lady. What? He just realized how long, how many years were they married for? How many years were they married for? And he just realized that she's a beautiful lady after all of these years, right? That's what the Torah says, right? right, right yeah. So what, what, what do you learn from that? Look how, look how holy he was. Look how holy that couple was. He never really looked, he never looked at his wife for the reason of, of if she's attractive or not. He didn't care. He saw her beautiful neshama. He saw he saw the inner yeah. be- the inner beauty he was always looking at, but now he's going to Mitzrayim. He says, "Well, wait a second. I got to see really. Let me. I have to assess what's going on." Whoa, you are a beautiful. I didn't know. Now yeah. what are we? Now what are we going to do? Now what are we going to do? Right. So then he made the whole thing. We know. And then what happened? Bas Pare. She was taken into Pare's house. Right. Right. Vilakich has Esther lebeisach esferish and Esther Amalka. The holy, the holy Esther Amalek was taken with to be with Achashverosh. Look at the connection, right? You know that, that Esther was connected connected with Sari right? No. Was she? I didn't know. Yeah. yeah, well, it says that Esther, uh, 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 Sari lived 127 years. And how many provinces was Esther Amalek the, the queen over? 127 oh, provinces. Oh, wow. See the connection? Yeah. Kisara ve'esther heim bechinas achas. They're really one aspect. 
Sarah and, and Sarah and Esther and Malka are really one aspect. Kamay Shamra Bay Sainuzal in Esther Rabba. Loma Zoksa Esther Lemeya the Esram Besheva Medinas. What made Esther and Malka worthy to have 127 provinces? Why did she have 127 places? So what does it say? He saw of Esther, because Sarah lived, through, like I told you, 127 years. So that's why she got 127 promises. He saw of Esther, hey, bechines malchus to Kedusha, because both of them are connected to the malchus of Kedusha. Right? There's a malchus of Kedusha. Like we're learning all these different ideas. There's the arrogance, there's the false arrogance, there's the holy arrogance. There's the, there's the, there's the, there's the uh, wrong, there's the wrong uh, 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 humility, and then there's the and there's the holy humility, right? So now we're learning about malchus, right? There's the malchus of kedushas, the malchus of of the of the of tuma, right? So Esther and Sarah are both the, are representing the malchus of kedusha. The two ladies they represent the malchus of kedusha. Why? Because the shechina shechina is also the feminine, and the soul is feminine. So uh, Sarah and Esther and Malka, they're representing the, the Shechina, they're representing the Malchus of Kedusha. Okay, make sense? So far, behind you. Shasit Ra'achab is Gabra v'rotze l'hafred Sarah b'chines Malchus Kedusha. The Sit Ra'achab is trying to take away Sarah from that side to bring Sarah onto his side. Take Sarah away from the side of Kedusha, connected to Hashem, come to my side. <laughs> right? I want you. <laughs> you, you come and you come to me. May May Avram, she wanted to take her away. The, the other side trying to take Sarah Imena away from Avram Avinu. The Tzaddik. Shu Bechina Samaich in the Kedusha. That's the idea of the Maich in the Kedusha, the holy, the holy thoughts, the holy, the holy mind. Velokha Lebeis Paray Arosh to take her to the house of Paray, the wicked one, the wicked one. But Hashem didn't abandon. He didn't, he didn't abandon her. He didn't let this happen. HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't let this happen. Ad the Rabbah. It was the op- exact opposite. Ad the Rabbah was the exact opposite. What happened? She was able to subdue Paray. She was, Sari Imenu was able to subdue Paray. Esther Malka was able to subdue the, the Malchus of the Russia of Achishreva. She was able to do that. At the time when someone's trying to run to do something bad to you, you have to use your odds as the Kedusha, right? You have to use your holy chutzpah to go against them. See how the lesson comes again? You see that? You see how Nassim, Rav Nassim builds on the same concepts and he, he shows you how they're all relevant to all these different ideas? It's amazing, right? Right, yeah. Okay, uh, okay, you uh, know, uh, uh, not only that, but Sari Main was able to take out a lot of money. She took out a lot of the money, a lot of the treasures. Really, when it means that she took out, when it took out that she was able to take Ashiris, was really the, the Ashiris that they swallowed up. Sari Main really took, the Torah says she took money. Ashiris? Right? They, it's Ashirut? Money, wealth, oh, wealth, okay. wealth. Oh, oh, Asher, okay. Uh, Ashirut, okay. what? Yeah, no, it says great wealth. Yeah, okay. great okay. wealth, right? <laughs> yeah, the great wealth, the great wealth went to Avram. What was that? That he really was able to be pulled to all of those, all of the Kedusha that they swallowed up. She was able to take those, yeah. they take it back. That's really what was going on. Those holy sparks. She was able to redeem those holy sparks that manifested its way in the, in the, in the sense of money. Right? Now again, we were talking about the tzedakah yesterday. So here we're talking about the money, but the money is really the sparks. The same way the machsa shekel was really used for something, holiness. It wasn't necessarily the money. It was, always, it was only there only to, 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 to ward off that we shouldn't have a, a plague. And that's why we use the money, right? Yeah, right. Okay, okay. Now, as paroi mi'oid, Pare was really knocked at Pare said, hey, well, what's going on here? Look, I had all these proofs. They have to, all these things happen to Pare. Why didn't you tell me that she's your wife? What, 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 you want to kill me? What are you trying to do to me here? Why did you tell me that she's your brother? Why did you do this for me for? 
Ribechines vayin naga Hashem is paroi negoyim gedolim. Hashem made from great plagues. <laughs> he had, he had, Hashem made him a lot, a lot of problems. He had a very bad night. <laughs> it didn't work out good for him. He was so he was so busy with his with the negoyim that Hashem sent him. Right, the the things that Hashem sent him, he couldn't bother with sorrow. See what Hashem did? Hashem does it wasn't as it said Hashem didn't abandon Sarah. Sure he didn't abandon Sarah because she was there, but he made the power he was so involved in his own problems, he couldn't even think about her anymore. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And that's what gave the wherewithal, the, the ability that Moshe and Klai Yisrael to, uh, to beat Paroi, and to take, to, take, to take it out of the Rishus. So we learned a lot of things like this. In other words, really, so why did Sarah have to go down to Paroi? Because Sarah may not have to infuse a lot of holiness in, in Mitzrayim. So that way, when Yosef at Tzaddik would be there, she already did the groundwork. Mm. She already laid the groundwork for Yosef at Tzaddik, so when he's there, he could be successful. And when the Jewish people will be there, they'll be. Yosef was there, and he worked in the groundwork so the Jewish people could be successful while we're in Mitzrayim. And that's what was really what was going on. Okay, you, you like this? Unbelievable ideas, right? Yeah. Unbelievable ideas. Okay, so we'll stop. we'll stop over here now. Okay, everyone have a wonderful day. Anyone have any questions before we stop? Any any questions? Can I write wow on the wall? Wow, they write wow.